Good day, Great Tolls. My apologies for the delay. We had a little bit of a technical issue, but we are back and we are live. So today we are continuing in our preparation for Friday. So we will continue to work on our exam paper questions, um, specifically our IB chemistry papers. So it says Katiwe, conduct an experiment to investigate the various factors that influence the rate of chemical reactions. She places a sample of calcium carbonate in a beaker of water, um, in a beaker, sorry. The beaker placed on a sensitive balance, she's not in a beaker of water, it's a beaker. Um, just a second, let me just do this. Okay, now, let's see. It says the beaker placed on a sensitive balance and excess of, hy excess of hydrochloric acid is added. In other words, there's more than enough hydrochloric acid. You don't have to stress about using up all the hydrochloric acid, okay? The following reaction occurs. You've got calcium carbonate plus your hydrogen chloride gives you calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide, and this is a gas. It goes off into the air. Katiwe repeats this experiment a number of times under different conditions, always with the same volume of HCl, which remains in excess. The following table summarizes the different experimental conditions for four Four of her experiments. So we've got these experiments one through to four. This is the mass of the calcium carbonate. This is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. You can see it doesn't change. Um, and there's enough hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid as well. The temperature changes and the state changes. It says during each experiment, the mass of the beacon, its contents are recorded every minute. The graphs below indicate the change uh, changes in the mass of the beaker and its contents during the reaction is a function of time for the four experiments. So, okay, so here is graph A, um, here is graph B, this is experiment one apparently. So this here is experiment one. And this here is graph C. Now, first they ask you what is meant by the rate of the chemical reaction. Obviously, that's the rate at which the reaction occurs or the rate at which the reactions occur. It says, name the quantity that was kept constant during all four experiments. Do you agree that the concentration was kept constant? So that's definitely the concentration of the HCl. It says, give a reason for the decrease in mass of each reaction. Well, that's because, oh, sorry, carbon dioxide, like I said, is a gas and it was given off. So therefore, there's a decrease in mass. If they're closed in the in container, then the carbon dioxide wouldn't be given off, except you probably have an explosion. And therefore, it would remain, mass would be the same. Now it says, why are all the graphs horizontal lines after five minutes? Because at this point here, the reactions have run to conclude, uh, the reaction has run to completion, okay? So over here, after five minutes, all the reactions, all the reactions have run to completion after five minutes. Okay, now it says which of these graphs ABC experiment represents the results to experiment two, three, and four. Okay, so let's think about this. They've given us experiment one, which is over here. Okay, so this is the standard. This is the standard. Okay, now the then, yeah, the mass is the same, the concentration is the same, but the temperature is dropped. So this is going to have a slower rate of reaction, do you agree? Because the temperature is dropped, but overall it's going to have the same output. Same output because it's got the same mass. This is going to have more output. It's got the same mass. It's still granules. Um, it's got the same temperature, so this is going to have a greater output. And then this is still the same mass, still the same concentration. The temperature is still 25 degrees, but this time it's a powder, so this is going to be faster. So let's start with experiment two, which is going to be slower. So do you agree this here is experiment two? It's going to be slower, but it's going to have the same output. Okay. Then there's experiment three, which is going to have 
a greater output. Oh, sorry, I keep going the wrong way. So this has to be experiment three, which means this has to be experiment four. So experiment two is going to be graph C. Experiment three is graph A. And experiment four is graph B. Now it says, if a suitable catalyst is used in experiment one, which of the graphs A, B, and C will, it obtain, will be obtained? Explain your answer. And the correct answer is graph B. Why? Because the catalyst will speed up the reaction. The catalyst, the catalyst speeds up the reaction. Okay, so therefore it's going to have this gradient here. It's going to get there sooner. Okay. Oh, sorry, I messed up. This is slower and this is faster, isn't it? This is, oh, sorry. I messed up. This is slower and this is faster. This is still true, but this is wrong. That's still graph A and that's wrong. Because do you agree that this is getting to the final reaction faster? So if that's the case, it is going to be the faster one, which is experiment four. So this is experiment four and this is experiment two. So therefore, experiment two is going to be graph B and experiment four is going to be graph C. So this will be speed, C and Y because the catalyst will speed up the reaction, but you'll end up with the same output. You'll just get there faster. Right, nice question that. It says a graph below, so change color, do this. A graph below shows the effect of temperature change on KC. Okay, the only thing that affects KC is temperature for the following reaction taking place. So this is the equilibrium constant. So you can see KC is getting bigger as the temperature increases and then it gets to the point where it kind of stabilizes. Okay, says what effect does the increase in temperature have on the amount of NO2 formed? Okay, so do you agree that the KC is getting bigger, it's getting bigger as the temperature increases, right? KC is getting bigger. And we know that KC is equal to the concentration of the NO2 2 all over the concentration of the N2O4. So I said, what effect does an increase in temperature have in the amount of NO2 formed? Well, if the case is getting bigger as the temperature is getting bigger, this means that the NO2 must be increasing in size. Therefore, what effect does it have on the amount of NO2 formed? It increases it. Therefore, it says, which reaction was favored due to the increase in temperature? It's obviously the forward reaction is endothermic. So to be the forward reaction. Then it says state the Chatelier's principle. Okay, now again, guys, I'm going to say to you again, you guys need to go find your exam guidelines. Trust me, your teacher should have provided you with his exam guidelines. It's a big wad of paper and it tells you all your definitions that you need to know. But Chatelier's, the, the Chatelier's principle basically states that um, basically states that a reaction will try and fix anything that's messed up with it, okay? So in other words, if we increase the temperature, then the reaction will shift in a way as to compensate for the increase in temperature. If we increase the concentration, the reaction will shift in a way as to decrease the concentration. Do you understand that? Now it says using the Chatelier's principle, Explain whether the forward reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Okay, we've said that the reaction was favored, due to which reaction was favored, and I said the forward reaction, which means the forward reaction is endothermic. But it says use the Le Chatelier's principle. So what you would say is by Le Chatelier's principle. Guys, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what they say when you when you are explaining using the Chatelier's principle you have to use the phrase by the Chatelier's principle I know you're explaining it using the Chatelier's principle and they've asked you to do it so you might think well why do I have to say it trust me there's a mark allocated for saying by the Chatelier's principle okay so you could say by the Chatelier's principle we have noticed that an increase in temperature 
increases the Kc value, which means that there's more NO2, which means the forward reaction likes heat, and therefore forward reaction is endothermic. Okay, it says write down two factors other than temperature that can be used to increase the rate of the forward reaction. Well, let's see. What else could we do other than temperature to favor the forward reaction? Do you agree that we could increase the volume? We could increase the volume. Oh, wait, hang on. It says rate, 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 rate. Um, Increasing, we couldn't increase the volume because that would decrease the rate. If we want to increase the, the rate, we have to increase the pressure, um, which is the same as increasing the concentration. What else could we do? We could add a catalyst. We could add a catalyst. Yeah, that, that's about it. Right, now it says, consider the hypothetical reaction that takes place between A2 and B in a closed container. So A2 is catalyst and 2B is catalyst. And together, in a dynamic equilibrium, they form dark red. And delta H is greater than naught, which means the forward reaction is endothermic. It says X moles of gas and 2 moles of B are sealed in a 1 decimeter cube container. After a few minutes, equilibrium is reached and the contents have turned a light red. Okay. At equilibrium, it is found that 0.4 moles of gas B, I mean gas AB, is present in the container. The value of Kc determine X, the quantity of moles of gas of A2. Okay, so we need we need a table. So we need to write A2 plus 2B goes to 2AB. Okay, and it doesn't matter what you use for your table, whether you use SUMAC or Shrek or whatever, it's fine. We have a start, we have a use or made, or as um, some of my students like to say, reaction. A reaction, we have equilibrium, and then we've got the concentration. And then I like to do a double line over here just to help me see the reactions from the products. Now it says, when we started, we had X moles of A2 and two moles of gas B in a one decimeter cubed container. So we're dividing this by one. So if you divide it by one, you really don't have to write it, but I think it's a good habit to get into that. You're taking your concentration, you're taking the equilibrium value and dividing it by whatever the volume is to get the concentration. It says, okay, at equilibrium, it is found that we've got naught comma four moles of AB. And we've got the KC value, right? KC, is equal to AB squared over A2 multiplied by B squared. Okay, so nowhere does it say that we had any AB to start with, so we can assume that we had zero AB. So we know we got zero, which means we made naught comma four which means we must have used, this is a ratio of 2 to 2, which means we've used 0, 4 of this. And this is a ratio of 2 to 1, which means we halve this, so we've used 0, 2. So at equilibrium, we've got x minus 0, 2, which is an x minus 0, 2. This is 2 minus 0.4 is 1, 6, that's 1, 6. So now we can substitute into this, and we've got the KC value. The KC value is 0, 5 is equal to AB squared, so it's 0, 4 squared, all over the A2, which is x minus 0, 2, multiplied by b squared, which is 1 comma 6 squared. Okay, therefore, do you agree that x minus 0 comma 2 is equal to, what I'm doing is cross multiplying, is going to equal to 0 comma 4 squared over 0 comma 5 times 1 comma 6 squared. So let's work that out using our calculator. So we've got 0 0.4 squared divided by bracket 0, what is going on now? 
stupid thing. Um, okay, 0 0.5 multiplied by 1.6 squared close bracket equals equals one eighth. Therefore, x minus naught comma two is equal to one eighth, one over eight. Okay. Um, and then we can add the naught comma two. So we add the naught point two, and that equals thirteen over forty, which is naught point three two five. So x equals naught comma three two five moles. There you go, naught comma three two five moles. Now the cool thing about this question is there are a lot of marks for this question. So in other words, there's a lot of marks allocated to do the table, even though it's not a very difficult question. You just have to go through the steps. So please, guys, practice this question. Right, now it says magnesium hydroxide, which is MgOH2, is often used to relieve an upset stomach. The pH of HCl, which is hydrochloric acid in a person's stomach, is 1. It says calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid in the person's stomach. Okay, so we know that pH equals minus the log of the concentration of H plus ions, and that is equal to 1. So therefore, we can get the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions by going shift log of negative 1. Let's try again. Delete. Negative 1 equals 1 tenth, which is 0, 0,1. So the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions is 0,1. Now, ask the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, but if you think about this, HCl breaks up into H plus plus Cl minus ions. Therefore, the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions is the same as the concentration of the hydrochloric ion, hydrochloric molecules. So therefore, HCl is equal to 0, 0,1 moles per decimeter cubed. Done. Now it says, will the pH of the stomach increase, decrease, or stay the same after taking a dose of magnesium hydroxide? Well, let's think about it. What's going to happen? The pH is going to have to increase because it's going to try and neutralize. A person takes a dose of magnesium hydroxide. Write down the balance equation for the reaction that takes place in the stomach. Okay, so we should know that an acid plus a base forms a salt plus water, right? That is the reaction. So the acid is HCl plus the salt, which is magnesium hydroxide. That is going to form magnesium chloride plus water, salt plus water, right? So we need to balance it. So we need two here because then we'll have two chlorines and we'll have over there. Now let's have a look at this. We've got two and two is four hydrogens, and so we need a two in front of that, and then we balanced. Awesome, done. Now it says, explain what is meant by the neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction is basically when we are trying to balance out the, the, the hydroxides and hydroxyls. In other words, we are trying to um, get it to reach a chemical equilibrium. Okay, now it says 12 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide of concentration 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed and 48 cubic centimeters of barium hydroxide of unknown concentration are mixed in a large flask. Mm, okay, they're mixed in a large flask. The solution is homogenized, which means it all mixes together, so we don't know which one is sodium hydroxide and which one is barium hydroxide, okay? The solution is then completely neutralized with 54 cubic centimeters of 0, 0,05 moles of sulfuric acid. Calculate the concentration of the barium hydroxide solution. Sure. 
Okay, so what do we have? We have that sodium hydroxide and barium hydroxide react with the solution of sulfuric acid to completely break it up, okay? So what do we have? We've got sodium hydroxide. We know that it's 12 cubic centimeters at a concentration of 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. We've got barium hydroxide, um, which has got 48 cubic centimeters, and we have no idea the concentration of that. The solution is completely neutralized by a sulfuric acid, H2SO4. The volume is 54 cubic centimeters, and the concentration 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed, right? It says calculate the concentration of the barium hydroxide solution. Okay, so do you agree we've got sodium hydroxide plus barium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid? And these react to form the salt. See, that's what doesn't work because it should either be barium sulfate or sodium sulfate. Okay, wait, I've got a better idea for this. I'm an idiot. What we're going to do is it completely homogenizes, right? But it mixes, so they react independently. So what we're going to do is we're going to react the sodium hydroxide with the sulfuric acid, okay? And we're going to see how much of that is required to react, okay? So in other words, we're going to say we've got 12 cubic centimeters of this and 0.1 cubic centimeters of this, and we've got the concentration of this. We're going to find out how much of the sulfuric acid it neutralizes, right? And it forms, okay, so it, let me just redo this, hang on, where's the link? Okay, so let me explain. We've got sodium hydroxide is going to react with sulfuric acid to form sodium sulfate plus water, right? Now, we're going to use up all of this stuff, okay, the sodium hydroxide. We're going to use up the volume of 12 cubic centimeters and the concentration of 0.01 to use up some of the sulfuric acid, which has a volume of 54, but more importantly, has a concentration of 0.05. So we're gonna find out how much of the sulfuric acid is neutralized using this, okay? Then the rest of the sulfuric acid is going to be neutralized with barium hydroxide and sulfuric acid is going to be used, okay? So then the rest of the sulfuric acid is going to need this barium hydroxide to be completely neutralized and that's what we're going to do. So at the moment, we've got V12, V, the volume is 12 cubic centimeters, the concentration 0 0.1. Here we've got the concentration is 0 0.05. We have to work out what the volume is. Okay, we have to work out what the volume is. Um, and we've got the equation CA, VA over CB, VB is equal to NA over NB. So the first thing we need to do is balance this thing, okay? So we've got one sodium here and two here, so we're going to double up there. Then we've got one sulfate, one sulfate. We now have four hydrogens and six oxygens. Yeah, we've got four, so if I double this and it works, okay. So now do you see the ratio is 2 to 1? So I can say the concentration of the acid is 0, 0,05. The volume of the acid, we don't know, that's what we're working out. The concentration of the base is 0, 0,1. And the volume is 12. The number of moles of the acid is 1, and the number of moles of the base is 2. So therefore, we can say that the volume of the acid required is a half times by not no times by one comma two divided by naught comma naught five. So really for the volume of the acid is okay let's work it out. 0 0.5 multiplied by 1.2 equals divided by 0 0.5. 
five equals. So it's used up 12 cubic centimeters. So out of this 54 cubic centimeters, we have neutralized 12 cubic centimeters. So what is left is going to be 54 minus 12, which is going to be 44 cubic centimeters. Okay, so that's what's left to neutralize. So now we've got 44 cubic centimeters right of the sulfuric acid but now this isn't sodium hydroxide anymore now it's barium hydroxide so now we are reacting barium hydroxide with sulfuric acid to get barium sulfate it's two no it's not it's barium with one sorry barium sulfate Okay, plus water, one barium, one barium, one sulfate, one sulfate, two waters, um, hang on, two hydrogens, <sighs> seriously, this is unbalanced, um, if I put a two in front of this, I then have four, and that's right, <clears throat> okay, fine, that works, so now the ratio, and then what do I have, I now have 48, cubic centimeters of barium hydroxide but I don't know what the concentration is so now I need to look at the concentration so now we're going to do exactly the same formula and equations the formula but we're going to use different values okay so we're going to say the concentration of the acid is 0, 0, 5. The volume of the acid is 44. The ratio is 1 to 1. So it's just big 1 over 48 times by the concentration of the acid. We don't know what that is. So therefore, we can say that the concentration of the acid is going to be equal to 0, 0, 5 multiplied by 44 over 48. How did I get that? I just took this across here. So let's do that. So we got 0 0.05 multiplied by 44 divided by 48. Delete. 48 equals 0, That can't be right. Am I doing this right? Oh, yes, it is. It's a concentration. Not coming not four five eight is not coming not four six. So the concentration is not coming not four six moles per decimeter cubed. There we go. Done. Yay. Okay, life is good. Let's move on. So the group of learners set up a standard electric chemical cell following, using the following half cells. So you've got PTO2H plus to, with H2O2 and Cu2 plus plus C. Okay, it says potassium chloride is used in the salt, which is a, which electrode is the cathode? Which electrode is the cathode? So what we're going to do is find our redox table. And remember that we use table 4B. Now, we need to look at for a reaction that it has got oxygen going to peroxide. Oxygen going to peroxide. Um, oh, there's water going to peroxide, but hang on a minute. Um, okay, wait, so just hang on a second. Um, did they tell you anything else? They've got oxygen gas coming in here, there's copper. Okay, so the first reaction we've got is Cu2 plus going to copper, Cu. And that reaction is Cu2 plus, plus two electrons is in dynamic equilibrium with Cu. And that's Cu, and that's plus 0, 0,3, 4. Okay, that's the one reaction. Then, I'm pretty sure I saw hydrogen, there it is. Below it, below it, is O2 plus 2H plus plus 2 electrons 
is in dynamic equilibrium with H2O2. Okay, now normally we would write this as anode cathode if it was in the, the table form, but they haven't given it to us. They've just given us two half cells for the and between them. So we cannot assume that, okay? So remember the rule is that we need to be able to draw a C, okay? So yeah, it should be, the reaction should be going this way, then this way, then this way. In other words, your copper is losing electrons. So we need to go oil rig. We also need to write red cat and anode. Anox, sorry, anox. So reduction occurs at the cathode. Oxidation is the loss. Copper is losing its electrons. Okay, so it has been oxidized, and if it's been oxidized, it is the anode, whereas this is being reduced because it's gaining electrons, therefore it is the cathode. Now it says which electrode is the cathode? Well, it would be the oxygen platinum electrode over here. Then it says, write down the oxidation half reaction. Okay, so it's going to be Cu goes to Cu, 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. Now, grade 12, what you really need to be careful of is the fact that when you're writing a half reaction, you don't write the double arrows. It's no longer a reversible reaction. When it's in the state, it's actually in a one directional thing we'd actually have to add a current to to force it the opposite direction. So therefore, you only add a single arrow showing that you know it goes from copper to copper, two plus plus two electrons, done. Now we need to write down the reduction half reaction, which is going to be O2 plus 2H plus plus two electrons goes to H2O2. And that is obviously the reduction half reaction. Notice that the two electrons given off here and two electrons given off here is taken in. So this is nice. We don't need to balance it. Then it says calculate the initial EMF of the cell. So this number here, which I didn't write down and I should have, is plus 0.68. So therefore the EMF, the initial EMF is going to be 0.68 minus 0.34, which is 0.34 volts. Ta-da! Oh, okay. A second group of learners set up a st another standard electrode chemical cell with the following half reactions, okay? So you've got Ce plus three electrons goes to Ce, and then E theta or EMF is minus 230. And PD, 2 plus plus 2 electrons, PD, EMF is plus 0.99 volts. Okay, so the first thing we need to realize is that this needs to be written like this. This CE needs to be realized that this is being oxidized. So therefore, it is using, losing electrons. And this is being reduced, okay? That's the first thing. So therefore, we're going to go CE goes to CE3 plus plus three electrons, and PD, two plus, plus two electrons goes to PD. The second thing you need to realize is this is three electrons and this is two electrons. So therefore we need to balance. So let's multiply this by two. And if we multiply this by three, then we are balanced. And we end up with three PD two plus, Okay, plus 2Ce goes to 2Ce3+, plus, plus 3Pd. There we go. Okay, so the tricky thing here was to realize that this reaction had to be the one that was backward. Okay, and if you're not sure about this, because these are obviously number things that aren't on the table, then look at these numbers here. This here is a negative Okay, and this is a positive value. And if you go look at your redox table, the negative numbers on the top right hand side, which means that they have got increasing reducing ability, therefore they are oxidized. 
Okay, the ones at the bottom have got the positive values. They are the increasing oxidizing ability, therefore they are the ones that are reduced. So they gain electrons. Right, now it says that it's out of time. Right, grade 12, we will carry on with this paper um, and more questions on chemistry tomorrow. Have a great evening. Cheers.